We are now recording the Chaos Hangouts on January 8, 2019. Okay, thanks. Um, so I, if you saw yesterday, I sent out a couple, an email that was just about, or yeah, yesterday, just about the few things that I want to address. Um, the first is the Google Summer of Code for 2019. So the deadline for the organizational application, organization application is February 6th. Do we want to go ahead and do this again? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'll figure I that was. Uh, do we want to do something? Okay. Remember how we kind of approached it last year? We it had really a couple of proposals from different parts of the project. Mm -hmm. um, that that part, you mean? Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that worked well. What do you think, Jesus? <clears throat> what do you mean? Um, just the way we did it last year, where there yeah, were code. folks working on there was there was one person. Were there two people working on Grimoire Lab or one? Um, I'm sorry, but I don't remember what to can about. Google, Google Summer of Code. Yeah, but uh, what you mean is that we need to present to prepare the the, the proposal, right? Right. Yeah, I think okay. Matt was just asking if the way we did it last year seemed to work. Yeah. Sorry, I was lost. No, it's all right. Yeah. It's the it, first it, meeting it, of 2019. Where yeah, that's, no, that's why yeah. I was looking forward. Yeah. Luckily, you were called the link. <laughs> uh, no, this week I'm having a meeting with uh, Grimoire Lab developers to try to identify in which areas it would be nice to have some Google of, uh, Google Sum of Code experience. So I hope that during this week we can have some proposals. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, Georg just posted in the chat the ones from last year. Mm -hmm. Do we have to create our an organization again, or can we just live as the organization we were last year? Um, well, we would just submit it as chaos. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess my my question is. The key. Oh, okay. I don't know. I mean, I'll take care yeah, of. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So I just I guess the question right now for for the work groups is, it seems like yes, yes, you'd like to pursue it. I think it's now to the point of coming up with a couple different ideas mm -hmm. as to what that might be. Um, does does D and I have anything that they would like to consider? You know, Google Summer of Code is really about coding. So I don't know if there's any anything there. Off the top of my head, I don't know anything, but okay. it's something we can maybe discuss on Monday again. Okay. Uh, during, yeah, just to mention here, during, uh, I think it was in Outreachy on some internal grant um, from Mozilla, Emma was working with a student. She was producing some specific panels in this case. Oh, yeah, that was through the Outreachy program? Yeah, that was Outreachy, right? Um, yeah. That would be great, but the work was left there. So uh, having something similar is not that coding. So that's yeah. my. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, because I think the dashboards that she was putting together were more um, just kind of prototype UIs, if I recall. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much was behind it, but I don't really yeah, know. It, it was, uh, as far as I remember, mainly a mock up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm happy to help with the org admin and application process as well. You will help? I'm happy to help with that again. Okay. Well, I was going to rope you in anyway. So. <laughs> oh, well, no, I don't want to myself. <laughs> that was happening. Oh. Um, so I guess then it maybe, so, okay, so I'll just kind of punt it. It sounds like GMD, you can come up with a couple projects. That's really not an issue. And then I'll just kind of push it to DNI. Hmm. That if there's some prototyping that you would like to do, that you would like to think about, because really, if you recall what this was, we put a proposal, and we say here last year we said here are three different ideas, and then two move actually moved forward, right? And so the idea would be as if DNI even has a proposal on prototyping something or developing something, then that can live as part of the submission, and we could have four different types of proposals. Again, maybe only funding two students, you know, or four different projects, maybe only funding two students. So if DNI would like to prototype something, I think that'd be fantastic. Um, 
so then I guess that does raise a question. Actually, I actually haven't looked um, with respect to Outreachy. I'm not sure how familiar you are all with Outreachy, but it's, uh, I think it's from the Software Freedom Conservancy, isn't it? And it's a similar style program that, um, that really focuses on underrepresented individuals to engage in, in open source. If I'm remembering this all correctly, somebody can tell me I'm, I'm wrong. Yeah, basically that's what it is. It came out of the GNOME project and then I think the Software Freedom Conservancy is um, hosting it, shepherding it, but there are a mm -hmm. bunch of people in Red Hat that run it. Okay. Um, and then um, Sage Sharp is also heavily involved with it as well. Okay. Um, so it's really, for lack of a better term, it's really um, a Google Summer of Code-like program that is just targeting um, uh, gender minorities, uh, transgender, um, and also, um, I'm sorry, blanking, and, and also, um, yeah, so gender, transgender, um, alternative sexual orientation, just any of that, um, people are, can be um, uh, eligible to apply for okay. a program. Okay. Um, I think that the, one of the financial differences is the organization provides the, men, the um, stipend. Yeah, <sighs> that's, that's basically it. So Google Summer of Code, obviously they provide the stipend. Yeah. If you outreach -y, um, as the organization, you have to provide it. The last time I worked with them was when I was with the Overt Project. And at the time, I think we had to put up, I think it was $5,000, although this was a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, I think it actually has increased, but I cannot remember to what amount. So let me, um, let me actually pursue that uh, just a bit. Georg, do you have anything? Are you looking up outreachy stuff right now? Yeah, so it's uh, five thousand five hundred dollars right now. Do you know when the deadline is? Uh, they just started the new round okay. in, at the end of December, so I assume it's gonna be yeah December to March is the current round, and then um, okay, I'll have to look up when the next deadline is. Why don't you and I connect on that as well and get a little more info? Um, in terms of the stipend, I think this is something that. Perhaps Sean and I could rustle up. Sean, I'm speaking. Yeah, of, yeah no, I, I'm, I'm thinking I, of some of the groups that we work with. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm making a little approach. Some of my folks marshal some resources behind this as well. Yep, exactly. Sure. So I think maybe one of the first passes would be support from UNO and Missouri, ostensibly, right? Yeah. Um, so it, maybe we can try to pursue that just a little bit. Anybody else is welcome to donate, but I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask that question right now. Um, so why don't maybe Georg and I can find out some more information, uh, and come back to that next week. Um, I guess yeah. one of my questions on outreach is, do you identify a person ahead of time? In outreach, so Buckmark also had an outreach mm -hmm. uh, student uh, or intern, and. Yeah, it's a very similar selection process where they come and talk to us ahead of time. We can ask them to do a small task and then we select from that group. Okay, so we put so, together a proposal. Students uh, I was, identify. I was, advisor, I was advisor for outreach and the process is practically the same one. Okay. The main thing is to identify the tasks so that you can select candidates. Maybe the main difference is that as far as I know, you usually don't have that many candidates that you have in Google Summer of Code, which means that you can be much more detailed and even provide more care to the people applying. Okay. But the process is quite, quite similar. Does outreach you need to, it, apparently, according to last year with Emma, maybe it doesn't have to be so tech focused as well? It could be. No. Okay. I think there is a, there's a Google season of documentation program that is also there urging forward that may be suitable for non coding work okay well let me um on the outreachy maybe i'll kind of also push that to to the dni group if there's kind of non-technical things that you'd be interested in maybe that would be an opportunity to work with an intern 
so um okay cool <clears throat> Okay, secured funding at least one at sixty five hundred dollars. Okay, okay, that seems within the realm of possibilities. Okay, cool. Um, anything else on these types of intern projects? Okay, cool. Well, I think Georg, you and I'll do a connect next and bring more info back to the group. Okay, so one of the other things I have on this list is we have, so this has come up several times in the diversity and inclusion group, which is with respect to a metric called organizational diversity. All right, and so you all can, and, and I can correct me as I, as I speak, but basically the, the discussion is, is whether or not to include organizational diversity under the auspices of the DNI work group. Uh, some people say yes, <laughs> some people say no for a variety of different reasons. Um, and so the question is, is, is really that organizational diversity is obviously of critical importance to, to a lot of people. Um, but it, it, it appears to have kind of a, a, not a perfect home right now under the, the structure of the chaos work groups. So I guess the question is, what do we do with organizational diversity at the moment? I, so, so I'm sorry, go ahead, Don. I was gonna say, I think it's actually a slightly different question. I think the question is, what do we do in general with important project health metrics that don't cleanly fit into DNI or growth maturity and decline? Because I, I have a hard time believing that organizational diversity is the only thing that's a project health metric that isn't actually being done by one of the two groups, given the massive list of metrics that we have on the, in the metrics repository. I suspect that if we went through the metrics repository and tagged the ones that were being used by, or tracked in GMD and the ones that are being tracked in DNI, I think we would have a gap. And I think uh, that organizational diversity is a symptom of this gap that we have no one looking at overall organizational health metrics. Um, and so I, I, think it's, I think it's a symptom of a bigger problem. It's my opinion. Yeah, I, Fair enough. I completely, I completely agree. And first of all, I think that uh, working groups need to work with the metrics they feel they should be working with, mm -hmm. because basically they are working on a volunteer basis. So we, don't, we cannot tell this working group, you should be working with this, if the working group doesn't feel like that. And the second thing is, I completely agree that there are many other metrics that are probably out of the scope for both groups now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we were discussing this in our last meeting, if you remember, and I mm -hmm. think that the proposal we had was, let's, let, let's just take note of this somewhere in the metrics repository, saying it could be nice working with these metrics because many people express it interest in whatever. But right now there is no working group with working with this. So if you want, start a new one or lead the, lead the, lead the, lead the effort somehow. Mm -hmm. so otherwise, that's not going to fly. That's by assigning this metric to this working group because because we say like that. So, yeah. So I mean, I would. So my question to this this group, if we if we started sort of a maybe an overall project health, I don't know what we'd call it. If we started a working group to handle these these poor neglected metrics that don't fit in either one but are important. How many people would be interested in participating and helping define those metrics? So, I mean, I think by default, anyone that's involved in a working group or those metrics would be sort of matrix in potentially. Mm -hmm. So like organizational diversity is a great example because I think it does have a home in both diversity and inclusion and in growth maturity and decline. Like I agree with you that that's just one example of many, I, but it's an example with where two working groups have a stake in it. Right? Yeah, but I guess my question is maybe a little, I, let me rephrase the question to be very specific. How many of you would commit an hour of time to a meeting <coughs> and then hours of time, you know, a couple hours of time outside of the meeting to help define these metrics? Because if nobody has the bandwidth to do this, then I won't start a new working group. Um, if other people are interested and have the bandwidth to do this, so maybe we should kick off a thread in the, in the mailing list, but you know, I would be happy to you know to sort of work on kind of scheduling the meetings and participate 
in this working group, but not if I'm the only one who's going to commit the time to it. Because if we don't have enough people to commit the time to it, then maybe we wait and start it up later. I would be very interested in participating in such a group. Okay. And I think when we when the growth and maturity decline group there was we refactored the repository over the last year. There are metrics we created in the past that don't exist anywhere right now. Mm -hmm. But you know, so there are there are probably a dozen or more homeless metrics as we speak that that were sort of abandoned or left by the wayside for the moment when we created the working group. So I think there's a, a bunch that already have to be addressed and so I'm, I would be willing to commit. But I think it's difficult to say, uh, go and open a working group for working with everything that nobody else is doing. And um, what, what is more feasible, I think, is if you're interested, for instance, in organizational diversity, let's open a working group specifically for that. And if while working on that, the working group finds out some other related metrics that they want to deal with, of course, they can also do that. But I think it's easier to focus the working group on something specific and not on, the, let's say, everything bad what the current working groups are doing. <laughs> it be or orphaned metrics working group. Orphan metrics. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just to tie this in with the history of the Chaos Project a little bit, when we started the Chaos Project uh, almost two years ago, we founded it with two work groups, the software and the metrics, uh, no, committees. And so the metrics committees where we have this laundry list of all the metrics and then from there we've started the work groups to really hone in on the details on how to be implemented in software how to be deployed and so on and the work groups naturally selected a few of those so i think the committee itself still has a place in chaos as a placeholder for all these metrics like organizational diversity and then to spec it out, I think the right way forward would be to start a work group that then takes this on. And then once it's done, it can dissolve the work group again and the metrics committee will continue to be the home for it. Say that last part again. So the work groups in my mind are the place where we get together to spec out the metrics, to drive implementation, to advocate for a subset of all the metrics that we have in the metrics committee. Yep. And then once we are at a place where we are good with a set of metrics, we can disband the work groups and have the metrics committee as the place where all the metrics live take on again. Until someone again wants to refine it. Do so, we even still have a metrics committee? I haven't seen anything from a metrics committee. We used to be on this call. Certainly not active. There has not been a lot of work lately because the work groups have been taking charge. So the, the, formal, the formal structure of CAOS is um, um, a metrics committee and a software committee. The software committee is usually doing the staff because the projects are doing the staff. I mean, Auguri is improving and uh, Gimor Lab and so on is improving. Uh, the activity of the metrics committee, in the most part, moved to the working groups. A lot of the staff that we are doing in the working groups now are what the metrics committee was supposed to do. Of course, there is this relationship to implementation too, and that's where we link with the other committee. But I think that most of the activity of the, let's say, supposedly um, metrics committee are, is having in, is being is being held in the working groups now. How about if I if I take an action to put together some sort of proposal for what I think maybe we maybe we should do, sure. and um, drop it into the chaos mailing list, and I'll try to do that probably this weekend, looking at my my schedule for the week, but. <laughs> That's I'll put together some kind of proposal and see see what people think. Okay, and I think you have interest here on this call enough to drive it forward. Okay. Um, it did kind of raise another another issue though um, for me, not on not for you, Don, but um, the governance document for chaos is probably going to need to be modified to represent 
the current state of affairs because the governance document does actually talk about the software committee and the metrics committee. And I think it's important for the govern governance document to represent the reality of, of the structure of chaos. So I think we may need to revisit the, that just that single page governance document to define things better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we are meeting as a, as a board uh, in uh, Half Moon Bay at the leadership summit. So it, perhaps we could talk about it ahead of time a little bit and then discuss it in more detail there. Okay. Uh, good. Thank you. Um, any other comments on that? I got a smile from Georg. All right. Um, let's see. Leadership Summit, I guess my question here is um, uh, who's submitting? <laughs> What's going on with all that kind of stuff? So is anybody submitting things kind of on under the auspices of chaos? I'd, I'd like to submit something for growth maturity and decline. I thought we could discuss that next week. Sure. Um, I also plan to submit uh, a birds of the feather proposal with you and maybe Kate Stewart around compliance and risk. Um, I spread the chaos message to a group in Japan back in December. Uh, and I think there's some interest in that area that's growing right now. Okay. I know DNI has a couple things of interest. Yeah, I think we'll definitely submit a, I think we talked about submitting a panel. Yeah. Um, I might submit something, it's not directly chaos related, but on building a metric strategy. So okay. I'll probably submit something along those lines. I think I haven't quite decided what I'm going to submit to that one. Okay. Like a metric strategy internal to an organization, like how an organization would think about metrics or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. because there's, there's an open source, um, program office, like to do group track. Yep. So I'm also involved in those efforts. And, okay. um, so I think I'll probably propose something for, for that. Okay. Um, would it tie with some of those best practice documents that the to-do group has? You know what I'm talking about? The stuff that Chris um, put together? Uh, it might. Okay. I think they, they certainly have some, some documents on that. Okay. Um, but I think it's more, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't decided for sure if I'm going to submit that talk because I'm, I'm giving that talk at FOSDEM, how to build mm -hmm. a metric strategy for your company. Okay. Um, okay. so it'd be nice to be able to reuse it. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> um, are you okay? I was gonna say, I'd like to see that talk, but I'm not going to find them. So, <laughs> so if you can share the slides, that'd be cool. I don't know if, if they're on. All of the FOSDEM talks are recorded. They do a fantastic job. Oh. I mean, there's a bajillion uh, dev rooms going okay. on simultaneously and they record everything. It's fantastic. Okay. Would you mind when that's done sharing that to the list? Uh, yeah, I can do that. That'd be great. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, and then um, I, I might be submitting one as well um, for some work that I've been doing with our community manager to build some metrics just to link community management to other open source health metrics. Okay. Um, we'll send probably a couple of extra talks, mostly uh, related to use cases with a couple of customers. Okay. Um, I know that Nicole was preparing some abstract for TNI, so we'll be involved. Okay, so um, I'm just taking notes here. So it sounds like Don's yours was kind of corporately or organizationally centric. Um, ben, yours is with community managers. Is that right? Yeah, it's kind of a blend of community management and corporate stuff. Okay. Um, and then Daniel, yours is with use cases mm -hmm. on how different people would use, say. Uh, so we presented a use case with Uber, where they are using data for their open source office. Okay. So that's fun. And then, uh, well, you don't, uh, I don't really know because I, I'm probably uh, feeling the abstract thing like the day before, but uh, something related to metrics for sure. So for sure, we are sending this with you. I would like to send another one as we send for uh, the Open Source Summit in Edinburgh with Mozilla Foundation. 
which is another use case, a bit different. Okay. Um, but in that line, probably. Okay, sounds good. Very cool. Sounds like a lot. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, and then, honestly, my last thing here today was with respect to the. I'm kind of looking at Jesus and Sean on this last one with the work towards the implementations of the GMD focus area. I think it, it's around code. Is that right? Yes, we're going to. Yes, that's correct. We're aiming to have something ready for FOSDEM. Okay. And I think we're making okay progress on that. Okay. When is FOSDEM? First and second of February, or is it the second and third with ChaosCon the first? Is that right? I think that's right. Everybody's okay. nodding that the second thing I said was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ChaosCon is on Friday and FOSDEM's on Saturday and Sunday. So it's about a month away. Um, okay. This sounds good. Thank you. Sorry for kind of being date centric and kind of question heavy centric here. I just needed to get my head back into 2019. Um, so that's kind of on target. I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm really just curious the implementation stuff. I, I think so. I, I, I don't know what Jesus thinks. I mean, uh, it, we could always have more progress than we do, but I think we have something that's fleshed out enough to facilitate a discussion. Okay. Or will be by the time FOSDEM happens. Do you feel the same, Jesus, or are you wickedly concerned? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be muted, Jesus. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah, um, I think that we have uh, two focus area in progress right now. Uh, and um, we still have three weeks, so let's see. I'm, I'm confident that still Let's see what we can do in these two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, super excited about that. And then ChaosCon, um, are there updates from folks kind of leading that charge? I think I owe a bio to Don. So we have the schedule mostly finalized. I think I need, you're, you're missing two speakers to confirm. Okay. And the schedule is online with speaker bios and talk descriptions. Okay. Um, that's what's been happening on my side. So it's all, is it said to be shared with the list yet? Uh, yeah, we can share it. Okay. Uh, we also have this issue with the second room because finally we decided to go with a single track and we have two rooms there so we can find out some um, use for the second room. Some of the suggestions that we had when talking about this was having something like a hack space or a, a space for small meetings or, but anything that you may find convenient for that room, we have it available during the whole day, so. The one thing we do still need to do is I think we need to, I don't know, Daniel, how many registrations we have? Uh, so we have around 30. Okay, so we probably need to do a lot more to promote it. And um, if we could get a sponsor to provide some, you know, snacks and coffee and stuff, that would be kind of awesome. So anything we can do to promote it and encourage people to sponsor it, that'd be, that'd be helpful. How much for sponsorship do you need? A couple thousand. Does anybody remember? Looking for the numbers. How much? Did the numbers were the numbers were sent to the mailing list. I think. Uh, I think so. So I was basically indeed some questions. So I think yeah. Uh, so we have some numbers. I send this to the chaos events at the linuxfoundation.org. Uh, with basically the pricing, mm -hmm. um, we are talking if we want. So uh, the point is that. We didn't know about the total price of this, but in any case, uh, all of the coffee and so on for the full day would be like 900 euros. If we want some lunch plus desserts, that would be 1.5 extra. And some people around, some stuff from the place would be around 500 euros. So at least coffee would be some, something like 1,000 mm -hmm. okay. on the whole day. 
Uh, well, I'll see. I'll, let me see what I can do in that regard. If we are having... No promises. No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No promises. <laughs> I'll see. But I know the criticality of coffee, so that will be the argument that I will use with, <laughs> with people. <laughs> um, yeah, and if, if, if we are going for the coffee or the lunch, uh, I don't know how much room space we would have in the second room. That would be all. So it's something we have to double check. Because they are using that room for specifically preparing everything, for setting this up. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, set, set all of these. My suggestion would be that we have some, perhaps, uh, some uh, room for working if people want to work in some place. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps some demo place for anyone joining the discussion. So in any case, anyone wants. So something they are working at or some Ogor or Remar Lab or anything else or DNI or. And that would be the, the use of the second room? Is that your suggestion? Yeah. OK. Yeah, I like the idea of just using a sort of a collaborative working room. People could have little meetings or do, you know, work on little hacker projects. I think if we keep it informal, it should be fine. Okay. Okay. Right on. Uh, okay. So I, I somehow picked up a lot of things to do on this call. <laughs> wasn't my plan. Um, so kind of on my, anyway, I don't need to rerun things. Um, so I, I think this gives me some, some good things um, to hone in on for next week. Again, I just needed to touch base to kind of see where things were at um, timing wise. Does anybody else have uh, have other stuff in their mind? I have a quick question. Um, it wasn't entirely clear on the invite I got from Kate yesterday. When will the, the meeting at the Leadership Summit be? Oh, it's the it's Friday. So it is the day after. Yeah. Yeah. OK, because okay. she said maybe it was after right. and it wasn't. Well, Okay, so I'm like 98% sure it's Friday. I think she has to get a confirmation from Mike Dolan until it's like official official. Okay. That, that's the general. Yeah, thing. because I'll need to change my hotel because I already booked my hotel because they're selling out. Do you want me to try to see if we can move it to Thursday? Or not? A no, I can, I can move the, I mean, I okay. assume I can move the hotel. It should be easy. It's, it's always, well, yeah. I, okay. I assume. Right on. But I would, I would like. <laughs> I would like to get confirmation about the date in the next, you know, short period of time, so that before more things sell out, that we can actually okay. change our accommodations. Because I'll need to book international flights and stuff too. So. <clears throat> I assume Kate's not on right now, or she would be speaking up. <laughs> so I will, uh, okay, I'll ping her right after here. Okay, sounds good. Is that good, Brian? Yeah, I can. I'm gonna make my travel based on that assumption. Okay, sounds good. Uh, what else? Oops. Again. Thanks. This helps me a lot. Um, I suppose if everybody's good until next week, then sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll talk to you then. Thanks, talk everybody. To everybody then. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.